Hi there. Hey. Okay. So, I have a few things to do today. Let's start first so that I don't need my uh, phone for it. Let's start with a haul, a book haul. Um, in May and June, I bought a lot of books. And so I'm going to go through all of those books with you right now. So we're going to start with the books that I picked up. Um, I ordered them for the uh, Queer Blackathon. Um, oh, I think only like, not all too many of them actually arrived in time for the uh, Queer Blackathon, unfortunately, but um, basically I bought a bunch of things that, a bunch of books that I couldn't find through my local library um, or that um, I were there but I couldn't put a hold on just then because I already had too many holds because I'd put a bunch of holds for that uh, read -a and so the first book that I have is uh, The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. Um, this is, uh, <clears throat> Michael is a mixed race gay teen growing up in London. All he's, all his life he's navigated what it means to be Greek, Cypriot, and Jamaican. Uh, Cypriot? I thought Cyprus. But I feel, it might just be Cypriot, but I feel like I should be saying Cypriot, um, but never quite feeling Greek or black enough. As he gets older, Michael's coming out is only the start of learning who he is and where he fits in. When he discovers the drag society, he finally finds where he belongs, and the black flamingo is born. Uh, told with raw honesty, in raw honesty, insight, and lyricism, this debut from acclaimed poet Dean Atta explores the layers of identity that makes us who we are and allow us to shine. So I'm really excited for this. This is a, um, I believe all of the queer Blackathon books that I picked up, um, at least from, that I bought, were all um, recommendations from Bowties and Books. So I will also include the link to their um, recommendations video that they did for the uh, readathon. So that is the first book, and I'm just going to put that on my lap, and you'll see it slowly grow. <laughs> and then so the next book that I have to haul is Hurricane Child by Kaysen Kaysen Chandler? Kaysen Chandler. Let's go with that. Um, Caroline Murphy is a hurricane child. Being born during a hurricane is unlucky, and 12-year-old Caroline has had her share of bad luck today. When a new student arrives, Caroline believes her luck is turning around. Kalinda soon becomes Car Caroline's best friend. Together, the two girls must brave their own feelings of friendship and love while they seek to discover why Caroline's mother has disappeared or risk losing her forever. So, this is a nice little short book that I should probably get on just going through at some point, but I haven't yet because it's been sitting on this little cart. Um, and I've been going through my library books first. Uh, because those I only have for so long. Um, yes, and the next book is Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert? Or Colbert? Does she pronounce it like Stephen? 
I don't know. Are they? Um, yes. Uh, <clears throat> when Suzette comes home to Los Angeles from her boarding school in New, New England, she doesn't want to go back. L.A. is where her friends and family are, along with her crush Emile, and her stepbrother Lionel, who has always been, who has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, needs her around for emotional support. But as she settles into her old life, Suzette finds herself falling apart, falling for someone new, the same girl her brother is in love with. When Lionel's disorder spirals out of control, Suzette is forced to find a way to save her brother from himself. But will he ever trust Suzette enough to let her help him? excited about this as well. I'm excited about all of these. Um, enough to buy them. <laughs> and so, okay, so the next book that I have is uh, The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms by N.K. Jemison, which I have, as you can tell, I have already started um, because I started this for um, The Queer Blackathon. I actually got around to starting to read it during that. Um, I'm like a bit over a third through it. I'm, I will still be working on it. I just haven't been. So, Yain Dar is an outcast from the barbarian north, but when her mother dies under mysterious circumstances, she is summoned to the majestic city of Skye. There, to her shock, Yen is named an heiress to the king, but the throne of the Hundred Thousand Kingdoms is not easily won, and Yen is thrust into a vicious power struggle. So I've I've been really enjoying this. Um, she is just starting to uh, figure out what's going on and um, I have a few little uh, lines that I have uh, marked and it's really fun to read. Um, and I really need to get back to actually fucking reading it. So. Okay. And so, uh, that is it for now. For the, uh, books that I bought for the Queer Blackathon. Um. And then now, I'm going to do some more nonfiction, more academic books. I have three of them, um, and so the first one is one that I bought from um, Mahogany Books in DC. Um, I didn't go there, I ordered it online and um, it was delivered. Uh, and so that is Black Liberation and Socialism uh, by Ahmed Shak Shaki. Um, this is, uh, a sharp and insightful analysis of historical, historic movements against racism in the United States, from the separatism of Marcus Garvey, to the militancy of Mark Malcolm X, and the Black Panther Party, to the eloquence of Martin Luther King Jr., and much more with essential lessons for today's struggles. In the 40 years since the Civil Rights Movement, many gains have been made, but there is still far to go to win genuine change. Here is a badly needed primer on the history and future of the struggle against racism. And I assume also uh, has socialism. There's a little uh, sprinkled into there. Um, so I'm excited for this. I, um, this is something I knew that I wanted to buy more from, uh, specifically for me, I wanted to buy more from local um, black owned bookstores and so if you guys know of any um, black owned bookstores that are in um, Frederick County and Montgomery County in uh, Maryland um, and also uh, I don't remember what the county is called but whatever county Columbia is in um, I think it might just be Columbia County I'm not certain um, and Prince George's County as well but um, mainly those three, and then also in the city of D.C. So, anywhere around there, any black-owned bookstores, I just, I want to know 
where I sh if I'm if this is going to become a thing that I do like buy a whole fuckload of books um I want to know black owned bookstores to buy them from uh specifically local ones um so yeah so I'm very I'm not certain when I'll get to actually cracking this open um but I am very excited too um so the next one that I have is Caliban and the Witch by Sylvia Federici, uh, Women, the Body, and Primitive Accumulation by Sylvia Federici. Um, this is one that I heard about on a podcast that I listened to one episode of and really need to go back and actually fucking listen to actual episodes. Um, but yes, I listened to an episode of uh, the podcast uh, The Red Book Club where they talked about Federici's newer book, which is Witch Hunting and Women. Um, and so I decided to go and pick up the first book that she wrote on the topic, uh, Caliban and the Witch. And then I'm probably going to pick up the other one at some point, but I decided not to pick up both at the same time. So. And I'm not sure about this last one, if I've already can't remember if it was in I don't think it was in my last book haul I don't think I've done a book haul recently enough so the last one um, which you'll be able to tell I have uh, not gotten horribly far in but I uh, have been reading is uh, The Conquest of Bread by Peter Kropotkin um, which is oh I should probably I forgot <clears throat> Caliban and the Witch is a history of the body in the transition to capitalism. Moving from the peasant revolts of the late Middle Ages to the witch hunts and the rise of mechanical philosophy, Federici investigates the capitalist ration rationalization of so social reproduction. She shows how the battle between the rebel body and the conflict between the body and mind are essential conditions for the development of labor power and self-ownership, two central principles in moder modern social organization. So that's the deal with this one. And then this one. Um, this is uh, one of the founding classics of anarchist literature. Peter Kropotkin's book is a thoughtful, humane, and detailed critique of capitalism, a system which allows a small, rich elite to hold the majority of the population in poverty and servitude, despite there being enough globally to satisfy the needs and even the luxuries of everyone. The conquest of bread gives a spirited rejoinder to all who believe anarchism sounds good but cannot succeed in practice. Using data from his own time, the former Russian prince, whose family owned more than 1,000 serfs, lays out a detailed account of anarchist society, a fair and equitable social system based on the concept that, as all things are the common inheritance of mankind, they should and can be held in common. Many of Kropotkin's concepts are surprisingly contemporary, including needs-based social care and food security via a system that sounds suspiciously like present-day permaculture, a book for those, for all those interested in changing society for the better. And this is just, I should, I should probably read the big dude. Big dude says things that make people agree with him. And if I'm going to be getting into reading more leftist theory, I should probably read one of the big ones. One of the big boys. Okay. And now we get into a different matter entirely. Uh, which is that I went a bit ham. Uh, ordering Cat Sebastian books. So, uh, first we're going to start with the one that I've already finished, which is A Little Light Mischief. Um, this is uh, about a lady's maid who was a thief and is trying not to be a thief. Um, no. A lady's maid with a... Okay. I'm gonna read the back. 
Let's do that. Um, Lady's maid Molly Wilkins is done with thieving and cheating and stabbing and all the rest of it. She's determined to keep her hands to herself, so she really shouldn't be tempted to seduce her employer's prim and proper companion, Alice. But how can she resist when Alice can't seem to keep her eyes off Molly? For the first time in her life, Alice Stapleton has absolutely nothing to do. The only thing that seems to occupy her thoughts is a lady's maid with a sharp tongue and a beautiful mouth. Her determination to know Molly's secrets has her behaving in ways she never imagined as she begins to fall for the impertinent woman. Uh, when an unwelcome specter from Alice's past shows up unexpectedly at a house party, Molly volunteers to help the only way she knows how, with a little bit of mischief. This looks good. It's a little, it's a little novella that I really enjoyed. And I will, I believe I already have talked about this in a wrap up, so I will link to that in the description and I won't go any further into it. And then next, I have A Duke in Disguise. Um, if anyone else had asked for his help publishing a nunny novel, Ash would have had the sense to say no, but he's never been able to deny Verity Plum. Now he has his hands full illustrating a book and trying his damnedest not to fall in love with his best friend. The last thing he needs is to discover he's a Duke's lost heir. Without a family or a proper education, he's had to fight for his place in the world, and the idea of it, and Verity, being taken away from him chills him to the bone. All Verity wants is to keep her brother out of prison, her business afloat, and her hands off Ash. Lately, it seems she's not getting anything she wants. She knows from bitter experience that she isn't cut out for romance, but the more time she spends with Ash, the more she wonders if maybe she's been wrong about herself. Ash has a month before his identity is exposed, and he plans on spending it with Verity. As they explore their long-buried passion, it becomes harder for Ash to face the music. Can Verity accept who Ash must become, or will he turn away the only woman he's ever loved? So, I am very excited about the uh, radical bookseller aspect of this one. So, um, and it's, it's by Cat Sebastian. Whomst I love. So I'm very, very excited about that. Um, and then we move on. So next I have uh, A Gentleman Never Keeps Score, um, which is <clears throat> once beloved by London's fashionable elite. Hartley Sedgwick has become a re recluse after a spat of spate of salacious gossip exposed his most private secrets. Rarely venturing from the house whose inheritance is a daily reminder of his downfall, he's captivated by the exceedingly handsome man who seeks to rob him. Since retiring from the boxing ring, Sam Fox has made his pub the bell into a haven from those in his free black, black community. But when his best friend, Kate, implores him to find and destroy a scandalously revealing painting of hers, she, he agrees. Sam would do anything to protect those he loves, even if it means stealing from a wealthy gentleman. But when he encounters Hartley, he soon finds himself wanting to steal more than just a painting from a lonely, lonely man. He wants to steal his heart. Very very excited for that one. Um, I've read the first book in the Sedgwick series. Um, it's the first Cat's Fashion series, I believe, that I am hopefully uh, going to be reading in order. <laughs> um, after I have so far read um, the... Well, actually, I believe... I think I've read so far the um, what is the series called? I 
Yes, the Regency Impostors I have read in order so far. Uh, because I read the first one and now I'm reading this one. Um, but yes, so really it's just that I read the uh, Turner series um, almost entirely backwards. Um, yeah, I started at Ruin of the Rake and then I read And then I read the Lawrence Brown Affair, and then I did... I did read a little light mischief, mischief uh, after that, so not entirely backwards. Um, but still, I, I truly do not know what happened in the first one yet, and I feel like... Um, obviously it's not important to my enjoyment, but I've been very confused uh, by certain aspects. So now... I actually have the Soldier Scoundrel. Uh, Jack Turner grew up in the darkness of London slums, born into a life of crime and willing to do anything to keep his belly full and his siblings safe. Now he uses tricks and schemes of the underworld to help those who need the kind of assistance only a scoundrel can provide. His distrust of the, of the nobility runs deep, and his services do not extend to the gorgeous, high-born soldier who personifies everything Jack will never be. After the chaos of the war, Oliver Rivington craves the safe predictability of a gentleman's life, one that doesn't include sparring with a ne'er-do-well who flouts the law at every turn. But Jack tempts Oliver like no man has before. Soon his yearning for the apologetic, unapologetic crim criminal is matched only by Jack's pleasure in watching the soldier's genteel polish crumble every time they're together. So I'll finally figure out who the fuck Jack and Oliver are. Like, I know the general basics of who they are. Uh, but I only know what's been revealed in the other books. So. I... I still don't- is Molly in this? Do I meet Molly in this? Do I explain- does this explain why she knows them? I don't know why she knows them. She just does. So hopefully I'll find that out. All that soon. Um, it's kind of odd actually that this- this book is a lot like the- I take it and you take this one. I think you can kind of hear that it's a different sound. I don't know. They're like different- this one's all like shiny and like, well you can do that and then, oh this one kind of has, they're different, they, they feel different, it's weird. And then finally, I believe this is finally, we have Two rogues make a right, um, which I actually received like a week or two early for some reason. I'm not really sure. It just shipped early and arrived very quickly. Um, and this is uh, Cat Fashion's latest book, which I technically pre-ordered, um, but I pre-ordered it. <laughs> I pre-ordered it uh, close enough to the release date that it arrived before the Soldier Scoundrel did. Um, it might have arrived before even other books did, so. Will Sedgwick will believe, Will Sedgwick can't believe that after months of searching for his oldest friend, Martin Easterbrook, searching for his oldest friend, comma, Martin Easterbrook, Easterbrook is found hiding in an attic like a gothic nightmare, intent on nursing Martin back to health, Will kindly kidnaps him and takes him to the countryside to recover well away from the world. Martin doesn't much care where he is or even how he got there. He is much more concerned that the man he's loved his entire life is currently waiting on him hand and foot, feeding him soup and making him tea. Martin knows he's a lost cause, one he doesn't want Will to waste his life on. 
After, as a lifetime of love transforms into a tender passion, both men always desired but never expected, can they envision a life free from the restrictions of the past, a life with each other? Yes, I don't, I don't remember why, I think I remember who Martin Easterbrook is. But not quite. And I cannot, for the life of me, remember which brother Will is. There's so many brothers. Which one's Will? Which one's Will? Can't remember. I also can't remember which one uh, Hartley is. Hartley? Hartley, yeah. I, th I think I know which one Hartley is, but I can't really. My memory is shit. But I am excited to read this. Um... I've been putting this one off and the other Cat Sebastian's off because, um, let's put this down. Because, um, Cat Sebastian is one of the big reasons why my, um, little graph for the uh, raises of the authors that I have read in 2020 is. It's getting better, but it is so predominantly white. Um, it's not really that I've been reading a lot of... I've been reading mostly white authors, yes, but it's not really quite that. Um, it's more just that I've been reading a lot of Cat Sebastian, why it's quite so bad, at the very least. Um, so I haven't done the math to figure out what it would be if you counted each author only once, so who knows. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I haven't been amazing with my, I'm not reading any white authors until I fix this promise. Um, I was for a little bit, but, um, I have not been doing well. And so I've been reaching for comfort reads and I need to reach for better comfort reads, essentially, is, uh, the lesson. Or better, better, more diverse comfort reads, essentially. I just need to figure out what those are. Um, because right now I have, a, I have a great number of very good books that I've been reading, uh, but haven't really been sticking to just because um, I haven't been feeling good. And sometimes books make me feel more not good. And that's... I am going to read more diversely, but I am not going to force myself through books that are making me uncomfortable for personal reasons. Uh, I am I will put more effort into forcing myself through books that are making me uncomfortable for reasons that aren't personally effective towards me. So, like books with like uh, books where they like don't sugarcoat racism or stuff like that, I'll cry more to force myself through, but, um, books where they don't sugarcoat things like sexism or, um, homophobia or transphobia or stuff like that, um, I'll still try it because I want to read those books. Like, I really want to read, I'm current, I'm current, I'm, I'm not going to get into specifics, but I will, I'll, I'll figure out what I have to do to make myself uh, feel better and also read those books. And now I will wrap this up uh, by showing you, oh jeez, by showing you all of you. There we go. I hope this was, I hope this was a number, and I hope this was in a usual couple of months for me. Um, I don't know the, the Cat Sebastian books definitely and they make up a good chunk of this pile um, I bought them because I can't check out oh god I, got, I gotta put this down I gotta put this down I can't check out um, physical books right now from the library um, or at least when I ordered them I can't I don't know what's going on with the library right now um, but I prefer to read um, romance novels in the little mass market paperbacks 
um, rather than in ebooks. So if it comes if it comes in a little mass market paperback like this one, um, I will always, always, always prefer that over any other type of uh, mode. Except perhaps audiobooks. I do, sometimes it's just hard to get through reading, and so I do audiobooks instead. But yes, that is all. Um, I will see you, I don't know what order I'm uploading things. So I will either see you in my next video, which I have no fucking clue what it is, or I will see you in my June wrap-up. So, if you haven't seen a June wrap-up yet, that is the next time that I will see you. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and also to ring the little notification bell. Um, I haven't been very consistent in uploads, so that is um, something that's probably pretty important, so that you know when I upload. Um, and I will... See you in my next video. Bye.